it's really fun to, to speak to the Rotarians, and I've not done it before online. Uh, I have met with your group several times. Uh, I remember it as being a rather large group and uh, a fun group to speak to. And as with most groups in Louisiana, I find that uh, the folks here have just an incredible sense of humor. Um, of course, the last year or so has been uh, so stressful and um, there's been so much division and um, fear and frustration and anxiety over uh, not only COVID, um, but the political scene has been uh, quite challenging. And then on top of that, uh, as we all know here, we had a, an awful hurricane season. So there's, there's really no shortage of cartoon topics and um, I, I've brought a bunch of my cartoons along today to show you, uh, as well as some uh, rough sketches to give you an idea of the process that I go through. So I think on your screen now you're seeing um, the presentation. So I'll start running through these. So each, each morning uh, I, I look at the newspaper and go online and um, make a list of topics that I think will be good uh, for the next day's newspaper. And uh, after I have the topics written down, then I, the hard work really begins, which is trying to take a topic and find a metaphor or a punchline or a challenging uh, piece of artwork that will uh, illuminate not only the topic, but my opinion on the topic uh, and either have some fun with it or make a serious point. Um, that process can take a long time. It can take uh, hours to come up with an idea, or it can come very quickly. Uh, depends on, well, I really don't know what it depends on because that process is hard to describe. Um, but the idea of coming up with an idea each day uh, is, is, the, is, the, is the job of, of cartooning. The artwork to me is a sort of a, uh, uh, not as challenging as coming up with an idea. So what I do is um, I come up with some rough sketches and then I email them to my editor, Peter Kovacs, who I believe is a Baton Rouge Rotarian. And Peter and I either have a phone call and discuss them, or uh, he will just shoot me an email back and say, let's do this one or this one. I usually send two, three, four, five rough sketches. Some of them are on the same topic. Some of them are the same cartoon with different punchlines. And sometimes there are five different topics. Uh, this is where an editor will give his direction. And uh, Peter and I have a very good working relationship. So uh, this is usually uh, pretty seamless. So this is uh, what the sketches look like. Here's one that I did recently about uh, the division in the United States. And I was, this is a very rough sketch. This is what Peter would see. So this is uh, Uncle Sam is split down the middle and he's saying to a doctor, do you have a vaccine for this? And then once I get this rough sketch approved by Peter, I'll go ahead and do the pen and ink drawing, which looks like this. So that is the, the actual pen and ink drawing. And then I'll scan the cartoon into Photoshop. And once it's in Photoshop, I will add the color this is what the color layer looks like on this particular cartoon. And then it all comes together and this is what you see in the newspaper. So that process from the time I begin in the morning until I'm completely done with the cartoon and ready to post it online and send it into the newspaper for print is anywhere from, uh, usually I started around 8, 8.30 and my deadline is five. So some days I'm done a little bit earlier and some days later, but it's generally a full day of work uh, getting the process done. Uh, here's another rough sketch. This ran today, and this falls into the category of so many of the topics that I've done this year, which are, uh, these are tough topics to draw cartoons about. Um, it would certainly be easier to do fun topics, but not always the job of an editorial cartoonist. And recently, there have been some tremendous challenges and disappointments and outrageous reports issued about the 
sexual misconduct and the mishandling of it at LSU. So I did this cartoon for today. This is the rough sketch that I sent Peter. And this is a young man and woman walking across campus and they're saying, remember when our mascot was a tiger and the tiger is now an ostrich. So that is the rough sketch that Peter approved. This is the final pen and ink drawing. And this is what the cartoon looked like in the newspaper today. Uh, here are a couple of cartoons that have not run. This was one that was an option for today, but we chose to do this cartoon instead, but I'll show it to you. It'll probably never run because hopefully we'll be way past coronavirus next St. Patrick's Day, but this was the idea. This guy saying, Irish, no, but I am double vaccinated with his kiss me button. And here's one that I have on the drawing board uh, that hopefully will run in the next few days or week or so, entitled The New Zoom. And it's some kids running over to greet their grandmother who's been vaccinated. So I have lots and lots of rough sketches. I posted a picture on Facebook recently of about a 18 or 19 inch pile of ideas stacked on top of one another that is piled up on the side of my desk. I throw nothing away when I come up with a sketch or an idea or a general concept for something that I think me, might think would make an interesting cartoon, I always keep it and I either scan it and put it into my computer where I have thousands of ideas that have not been used or I have it on this big pile on the side of my desk. So let's go through some cartoons that harken back to 2020. Um, I did a bunch of cartoons when we were all in lockdown and quarantine. Uh, this was the most popular one that I did. It had um, tens of thousands of shares on Facebook. You may have seen it. It's a couple of kids and the one kid saying, mom, we need haircuts. And the other guy saying, I'm dad. So we all went through the bad hair days. Hopefully we're coming out on the other side of that. Also, we were stuck inside binge watching shows. So I did this cartoon. We're binge watching a show about superheroes. There were so many stories about the heroics in the ICU units, as well as so many other people that helped out uh, throughout the past year. A lot of times I like to do a cartoon that just sort of touches on a moment, um, how we all feel. And it was really tough, especially in a place like Louisiana where people are big huggers not to be able to have any personal contact with people. So I drew this cartoon, Group Hug 2020. And of course, there were so many divisions in the country, even over coronavirus, many of which remain today. Uh, the battles over people not wanting to mask and not wanting to social distance, which spilled into politics, it all became very ugly. I drew this cartoon, The Divided States of Pandemica, and uh, here's another cartoon about sort of the strangeness of living during a pandemic and lockdown, the online dating scene where everybody's face is covered up with masks and you're not actually meeting people. Then uh, did this cartoon about uh, the ongoing mask debate and uh, there is an I in unity, but unfortunately in this case, we used it differently. So of course, each state, along with the um, political divisions, if you will, in Washington, each state had their own set of issues here. Uh, the governor uh, was very slow and careful and followed the science in terms of opening up, but he had his legislature wanting to go much quicker so he's doing a thing here that says the reopening duet and he's saying it starts slowly, follow me. And of course, we have the legislature back there with a tuba ready to blow it wide open. And then occasionally I would have some fun with sort of terms that we had not heard before, or we really hadn't used before. So this is a, a, a couple and the wife is saying, where are you going? Who's gonna be there? When will you be home? Who's driving? Do you have your phone? And the kid is saying, Jimmy's parents are the original contact tracers. 
occasionally I really like cartoons that don't have a lot of words in them. And I did this cartoon about hopefully uh, trying to influence people to wear masks to slow the spread. So I did this one called Surge Protector. Here's one about Mardi Gras. But now we won't catch anything. I think that's the point. Now, in, Mar in uh, New Orleans, the mayor, LaToya Cantrell, talked about, uh, during the pandemic, starting a no driving zone in the quarter, uh, perhaps as a spinoff after the pandemic. So I had some fun with this. This guy's saying, I'll meet you there. I think my Uber's here. And this horse is saying, you, Bob. Another one about our division. People argue about everything these days. No, they don't. Now, in the middle of it all, we had an incredible hurricane season, which was a, quite a challenge for mostly the folks in Southwest Louisiana, but for all of us, I drew this cartoon. Sally is a cat one. New Orleans is in phase two. The state's in phase three. Laura was a cat four and I need a fifth. I also drew this one as the hurricane season wore on. The cleanup begins uh, in a state where people are known for pulling together. Of course, the biggest problems took place after Hurricane Laura, the power outages and all the problems in Lake Charles. I drew this one a couple weeks later in the hopes that people would remember and help. And then as the season grew even longer, I drew this cartoon. It's just until the 2020 hurricane season is over. So at Halloween, I did this one. It's not a costume. I've, it's been like this since, I've been like this since February. And that of course leads us to the uh, national politics, which was like a, uh, a virus in and of itself. We had uh, the Trump presidency. This virus is just gonna magically disappear as aid is saying, those are your poll numbers. We had the Democrats. I'm excited about Biden. Check his temperature. More problems. The, the president uh, grounded a fleet of airplanes and here the Republicans are saying, how do we get him to ground this fleet with the never ending tweeting? And then we had the Democratic fight within the party, pull left, drift right, level out, stay in the center, swing right, hard left, let me steer. When the election was over, it really wasn't over. And I did this one about the Trump lawsuits pouring in. When uh, Edwards ran against Responi, I did this cartoon. There's been a major development in the governor's race with Coach O taking the lead. And just like this, this uh, power meeting, this online meeting here with Rotary, it's never quite the same. I watched the conventions, the Democratic convention did a balloon drop. This virtual balloon drop lacks its original pizzazz. And then there was the whole controversy with the QAnon members in Congress. We should have distanced ourselves from Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now we're infected with a mutant strain. So there are divisions in not only the Democratic Party, but clearly in the Republican Party. And that the insurrection at the Capitol led to a second impeachment. The president was in Mar-a-Lago. I had this cartoon, have another TV sent up to the presidential suite. And then ultimately uh, Biden was sworn in. I took this old portrait of the founding fathers 232 years later and our instruction manual still works. Trying to infuse some hope into the process that we can, that the system works ultimately. Of course, 2020 also brought us the uh, horrific death of George Floyd, which we're about to have the trial for. 
the injustice is there and Lady Justice uh, saying she can't breathe because of the the racism involved and the the whole racial injustice in America brought to the forefront. Um, I also did this cartoon on the same topic when John Lewis passed away entitled The March Toward Justice Continues with this caricature of him being made up of all of the marchers, civil rights and equality as more of a graphic visualization. And uh, along with the hurricanes we have, Louisiana seems to always be under threat. So here I have the science, cl science Climate Science Deniers Club being flooded out. He's saying our meetings canceled due to flooding once again. Last year, uh, actually in, in 2019, the paper, uh, I did a, a, a two-page spread on the problems and the issues that we face due to climate change. Um, the spillway being opened, sullying the lake and uh, the brackish water, the the problems with uh, algae growth in the Gulf, all coming from so much of the same issues. And of course, this, our coastal erosion issues, which continue to be a problem. Uh, in New Orleans, they have a particular problem with the water and it's not so much to do with, well, it is flooding, but the, the pipes are so old. I drew this cartoon after they found some cars in a pipeline. How old are these pipes? They just pulled that car out of there. Uh, only in New Orleans could they finally take a good look at the at the drainage system and find some cars in there. Cars, amazing. Uh, did this cartoon, this airport traffic's insane. We're at Popeyes. Recently, I did a, a fun cartoon. It's the fastest way to local herd immunity with the drive-through daiquiris and vaccines, the Pfizer Fizz, the Moderna Mojito, and the J&J &J Jello shots. People really enjoyed this one. And uh, we're not quite there yet. So Valentine's Day, I did this cartoon. This is one from just the other day. It's daylight savings time. And the guy says, can you set our clock to May when they're hoping to have everyone vaccinated? And of course, there's a rover on Mars. These Martians are saying, we need a moratorium on new drilling as their house is being shaken. I did this one last week when Texas and Mississippi completely lifted their mask mandate. Um, so this was just a fun, a fun drawing and I thought a good point. I uh, did this one a week or so ago when the vaccine, vaccinations really began to roll out. A play on the just, just married. And then at Mardi Gras, we had the, Mardi Gras of course was canceled, but uh, this year they came up with this uh, float houses, which was very ingenious, and I, I'm predicting it will it will stick around because the houses were really cool. And I did this cartoon with a guy saying, "Go to sleep," with a woman saying, "Go to sleep, Harold. Nobody's going to flash our house float." And this goofy guy is standing there, staring out the window, like he's at a parade. Now we're back into politics again, and we have Joe Biden having his own difficulties at the border with the surge of migrants and obviously no quick solutions. But the biggest story really around here recently has been uh, the LSU scandal. And I use this as a way to get to another scandal, which is this couple and the kids are saying sexual misconduct, inappropriate touching, shameless denials. And this guy says, Andrew Cuomo coached at LSU. That was a way to get another big national topic in the news. Uh, this is some sports related cartoons. Today's playoff game is brought to you by AARP, Geritol, Senior Scooters and Prostate Plus. That was during the Breeze Brady matchup, which did not go the way I wanted it to, but nonetheless, Drew Breeze was a phenomenon for the Saints, for New Orleans, for all of Houdat Nation. Uh, Unfortunately, his time came and he retired. So I drew this cartoon this week with all of the things that he brought to the city and to the state. 
and use the little saying in that number. Um, here are some just fun cartoons that I always bring to my speeches that I think are fun. These are some older ones. This is when Colorado legalized pot. What kind of grass you've been feeding that horse? And I did this one on aging baby boomers. Losing all these rockers from our generation is making me feel old. Cold? No, I'm wearing a sweater. And of course, back when Mardi Gras was really a full-fledged Mardi Gras, I did this cartoon. Be on the lookout for anything unusual. And uh, along with doing the cartoons, which as I described earlier, involve coming up with a concept, doing, this, doing the drawing, <clears throat> and of course, writing a punchline. Uh, I get to do occasionally some side things. So I was happy enough to do these cartoons about Joe Burrow and the Tigers winning the national championship, which was awesome and really fun. And then as Robert mentioned, one of the most popular things that I do at the paper is the cartoon caption contests every week. And, um, you know, I did these, I did these caption contests when I was in New York and we got a few responses, but nothing like we get here. And I'm convinced it's because everyone here has a great sense of humor and they are also, uh, funny personalities. People are very much characters here and they like to tell jokes, so they're not shy. People in Louisiana have never been accused of being shy. So I started doing these caption contests and I was amazed at the amount of uh, responses that we got and it has grown and grown and grown. So I just thought I'd show you a couple. I did this one actually doing during the, uh, the flooding in New Orleans and when they found those cars and I'm bringing, showing you this one because it had the most responses of any we've ever had. Uh, well over 800, and I thought the punchline that the person wrote was really funny. So this is what I offered them to fill in, and this was the punchline. He says, now what did you find? He says, there's another city down there, and they're pumping the water up, which I thought was incredibly creative. It's really hard to pick a winner. We get so many funny entries, which is why we generally run a lot of finalists. <clears throat> but... Um, I usually, I look for an entry that's a little off base, a little different than some of the ones that we get. And this is one that we did last week with uh, the crawfish in a hot tub with their little his and hers towels. And I thought this punchline was really clever. This person wrote in, is that Larry and Joan sunbathing on that other, on that paper over there? It looks like they're getting burned. Very clever stuff. So that's a bunch of my work. And uh, I would show you an animation, but I tried this on Zoom before and it kind of stuttered and didn't play very well. So why don't we go to question and answer and see if you have any, any questions for me. Enjoy having the cartoons more than anything else in the paper, honestly. Uh, we do have a, a, a quick question here. Susan uh, Nelson wants to know, uh, it seems you need two skills as an editorial cartoonist, the ability to draw and a degree of wit and humor about current events. Which of these did you realize you had a talent for first? Well, uh, I had a talent for being a smart aleck in school and my teachers would tell you that, uh, that I was uh, always one with a, a funny line and I'm being generous. Uh, uh, so I think, Early on, I had a sense of humor, and I think I got that from my parents, who were both very clever and funny. Um, and the the cartooning was something that really I developed much later on, uh, and that took a lot of discipline to learn from scratch, sort of how to do that. Uh, and over a period of time, I developed a style. So you are correct. That's a good question. There, it really is a, a double skill set. But as I would tell uh, students that ask. The most important thing is to have a point of view and to be able to make uh, a comment about social or political events and uh, be able to synthesize very complicated issues into a single quick take is really where the skill is and where the, the difficulty of the job, I should say, is in that, the drawing 
over a period of many years is second nature and fun. Um, but that is sort of the process. So I have a question for you. When you're sure. deciding to draw a cartoon, are you, how much time do you allot yourself and how much time do you spend in just thinking of the concept and then how much time does it take you to actually draw and then paint the whole thing? Well, thinking up the concept takes up most of my morning. So I like to have my ideas in uh, to my editor or have a discussion with him anywhere between 12 and one o'clock, which is somewhat late because as I said, my deadline is five. I prefer to be to beat the deadline. And it also depends on what I'm drawing. If, like for instance, the cartoon that I showed where there was a, a mask in the shape of Louisiana, that was not a complex drawing. Uh, and that whole cartoon probably took an hour to draw. But some of the other ones involving, you know, drawing a horse and part of the French Quarter or drawing somebody canoeing down the Mississippi River or drawing the White House and people outside is, is considerably more complicated. So, you know, there is no stability in terms of the time differential every day. Like some people's jobs, they know from 9 to 11, I'm going to do this task and then I'm going to do my job is uh, is really quite haphazard on how the time is divided up. And amazingly, and I've talked to other cartoonists about this, and we all agree that sometimes when you're really in a crunch on deadline, you somehow do your best work. Uh, you're in a panic. There is no missing of deadlines. And it forces you to be very simple. Simplistic ideas sometimes are the best. Um, but it is a challenge every day to... Uh, to balance the time and the artwork takes the artwork the drawing the coloring takes uh, a quite a long time bill peters, bill peters wants to know when you open, open your cartoon, your cartoon contest, contest do you already, already have something, something in mind as to what you're looking for i get that i get that even uh my wife asked me sometimes uh what are you looking for and i said really i don't have any idea because it's the one time where i am not tasked with writing a punchline so what I'm trying to do is uh, really do a funny drawing that's not, that doesn't have too many elements. I did a caption contest years ago, and I think it was like a kid playing football with a cat in front of the Superdome. There was a newspaper headline. There was a guy on a scooter, and it was a terrible disaster because there was way too much going on. So what I try and do is just set up a funny concept and then let the punchline let let the readers surprise me um and uh they really do and it's it's amazing we have so many creative folks out there um and there's there are a handful of ones that are finalists quite a bit they're very very funny a uh, jay darden actually is one of them he's he's just very funny uh we've yeah. talked about it in person he's he's witty and these are ideas that are not sort of regular ideas. So the tough part is picking the winner, I think. Um, I usually go through them the night of, at midnight, I literally stay up till midnight and wait till all of them come in and then read them all. And it's, there's a lot to read and I'll cut it down to maybe 35 or 40. And then I'll pull out maybe the five or six, the ones that, that are naturally, they're just hilarious. And the other thing that I really try and do, and I've done this from the beginning, is I don't put politics into it. I, I think I do enough political stuff in my work, and I look at this as a as a kind of reprieve from the serious stuff that we go through. Um, and I think that's one of the things I enjoy about it, and it may be one of the reasons that we get so many responses, because it's just a chance to take a breather. And I do focus a lot on local stuff. My stuff is nationally syndicated. Not surprisingly to the people on the Zoom call, many of the things that I do about Louisiana get picked up nationally um, because people find Louisiana, New Orleans, uh, the politics here fascinating. And unfortunately, sometimes our national news, our, our local news becomes national news, but many times it's sort of the fun, quirky stuff. And I get a big pleasure out of seeing uh, even the cartoon about the, the fans in Louisiana uh, ran last week in the Washington Post. And I, I just get a big kick out of that because it shows that people are really paying attention to our state. 
But the, the caption contests have been a big, big plus. It's a great way to connect with people. I call the winner personally every week. And uh, the response is, uh, is really, to me, overwhelming. Uh, it's so much fun. And actually, I worked at home before the pandemic. And of course, I still work at home. And I go to the office occasionally, but my studio and whatever is here. And the caption contest is the one time that I really connect with readers other than giving presentations. So it's really fun to talk to people. And I got an awful lot of nice comments during the entries in the emails as well. So it's nice. Well, Walt, thank you very much for spending some time with us again and really have uh, enjoyed. Uh, as Judith, uh, Judith, you see there, she's, you know, we've, we've very much enjoyed having you uh, share your cartoons with us. I know it's, it's my favorite thing to read every morning in the paper. So thanks again for, for coming to Rotary. I appreciate it. Uh, as I said, um, I gave a, a Zoom presentation to a Rotary Club in, Simone, uh, uh, in, in Northern California uh, about two weeks ago. And I, I think I made them jealous because I told them that I speak to one of the largest Rotary Clubs in the country uh, with the Baton Rouge group. So hopefully maybe next year uh, I can get an in, in-person uh, invite because I can tell you from my perspective, it's way more fun to hear people laughing and responding oh. to the cartoons, but uh, I was glad to help out today. And it's, it's nice to be able to reach out to the folks in Baton Rouge. So thanks for having me. You bet. Thank you, Walt. Thank you.